Hello, my name is Vic, and welcome back to another Caden Live 2021 tutorial. In this video, we're going to try to hit two birds with one stone. We're going to talk about keyframing, and we're going to apply what we learn in order to do a pan and zoom effect. Before we get started, we're just going to have a quick version check of Caden Live. We are using version 21.04.1 at the time of making this video. I've set my project settings to 1080p, 24 frames per second. You can set it to whatever you want and whatever you need. And to make sure that we're looking at the same user interface, just go ahead and click onto the editing workspace. Now for today's video, to make the example a lot simpler, I'm actually going to be using a photo. So let's bring this photo in. It's going to try to change my project profile. And in that case, I'm just going to press cancel. In Caden Live, when you bring in a photo, it automatically sets the duration to five seconds. I believe it might be four seconds at a default. I might have changed mine uh, in my settings to be five seconds, but it's either four or five seconds. So we've got a five second photo duration here. And this is a photo, so if I press play, nothing's going to happen. It's just a still image. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in so we've got a bit better view. So I'm basically just using the mouse wheel and holding the control button to zoom in a little bit too much. Maybe this is about what we need and we're going to apply an effect. So we'll talk about keyframing, but we'll apply an effect called transform because this is going to help us do the pan and zoom effect. Transform is an amazing effect. I use this all the time and it's one of the most useful effects here in Caden Live and for any video editor for that matter. And we can see the effect options here in our effect and composition stack. If you don't see this window, make sure that you're clicking onto the clip that you've applied the effect to. And if you still don't see it, you can go to view and click on effect composition stack and make sure that box is checked. You can tell that this is a keyframeable effect because there is a keyframe timeline here and a keyframe toolbar. Below here is actually the options for our transform effect. So let's talk about our keyframes up here first. I'm actually not 100% sure if this is called, officially called the keyframe timeline and if this is officially called the keyframe toolbar. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to call it those names. Notice that when I'm moving my cursor in the keyframe timeline, the needle in my project timeline is also moving and also the needle in my project monitor. So that means whatever I move up here refers to the same point in time in my project. So in the same way, if I'm moving my project needle, the keyframe timeline needle is also moving. So just so that that's clarified and you're not confused which is which. Notice that we already have one keyframe that is added by default. So this is a default in Caden Live, and there is no way that I can delete this keyframe. So that's added by default. And let's try to just change the size into 50% just to demonstrate what happens. That 50% size change is applied to the entire clip because there are no other keyframes that are added. Let's reset this back to 100%. And we're going to go ahead and add another keyframe. So let me add something around the one second mark, which is at this point over here. And the needle is not quite getting there. So what I can do is I can manually type this in at one second, press tab, and I'll align it there because I'm a little bit OCD. Let's add a keyframe. We've got our new keyframe here and the size is at 100%. So let's change this now to 50 and we'll see what happens. I'll jump back to the beginning of the clip and I'm going to press play using the space bar. And notice that there is that animated reduction in size. So it starts at 100% and as we progress forward, it reduces down to 50. Now this keyframe I can move around. So if I select this, I can move it further out into the timeline and how that affects my transform effect is that it slows that animation down. So we get a slower reduction in size. If I move it forward closer to the start, 
it's going to speed up that effect. So if I press play here, it's going to make it a lot quicker. So that's one way to actually manipulate the timing of the effect that you want. You can navigate the keyframes using the toolbar. So I can go to the previous keyframe. I can go to the next keyframe. What I can do also is I can move this keyframe to anywhere that I want, in particular in my timeline. So let's say I'll just select a random point here. Let's say I want to move it over here. So I can select the keyframe. Oops, it selected it back. So let me do that again. And let me click onto this move selected keyframe to where the cursor is. So when I click that, it's going to move it to wherever I want it to. So let me try that again just to demonstrate. I'll move it back to the one second mark and then click on this because my cursor is pointed here. It's going to move it back to the one second mark. I can add another keyframe. So let me move forward, advance into the two second mark and I'll add another keyframe. Notice that when I add a new keyframe, Caden Live's behavior is to inherit the values of the previous keyframe. So previously we had set it at 50%. When I added the new one, it set it also at 50%. So let me just change this to 100% for now. And again, we can navigate between those keyframes if we wanted to. Another useful function in the toolbar is to duplicate a selected keyframe. So over here, if I want to reduce it back down to 50%, because I changed this to 100, if I'm just going to add a new one, it's going to give me a keyframe at 100%. So the best would be to duplicate this one because this is at 50. So let's try that out. Select the keyframe first, press duplicate selected keyframe, and then I'm going to advance to this point over here, and I'm going to press the button again. So when I paste it, so it's the same button for copy and paste. So this keyframe now is also set at 50, whereas the one that we created before was at 100%. So I hope that's clear. The other function that I really wanted to talk about, but I didn't seem to figure out how to get it to work is apply value to selected keyframes. Uh, it didn't really work for me. I couldn't figure it out. So if someone knows, uh, do share it in the comments. If you're having a hard time seeing the separation between the keyframes, and this is usually what happens if you have a clip, let's say longer than five seconds, you know, a minute clip is that the keyframes can be bunched up really close together. What you can do is you can hover over the edge of the scroll bar here and click and hold to zoom in and then zoom out. And that should hopefully give you a more magnified view of your timeline and you can see the separation of your keyframes a lot better. Now let's navigate back to the very beginning so I can show you how to navigate according to the keyframes here. I'm just going to previous, previous until I get to the very beginning. There's an option here for the keyframe type. So we've got three keyframe types. The default is linear. We have discrete. And then lastly, we have smooth. What I will do actually to demonstrate this, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these other keyframes because I don't want you to get confused. I've gone back to the first keyframe here. I'll select it and I'm going to change it to discrete. So discrete just means that there is no animated uh, reduction in size. It's just going to jump from 100 straight down to 50%. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to press play. So there we see it. It's at 100, 100. And then once it gets to the one second mark, I believe, yes, once it gets down to the one second mark, it jumps straight down to 50%. Let's play that again. So 100, 100, boom, straight down to 50. Now this might be useful for you if you don't want to see that animation, if you just want the size to automatically reduce down to 50% or whatever size that you need it to be. The other keyframe type is smooth. Smooth is like linear, but a smoother transition or a smoother change in the size. So let's press play. So we've got that smoother reduction in the size. And for comparison, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and add another keyframe here. 
we'll put this back at 100% so we've got that shrinking and growing effect. Let's change this to smooth as well. So this is our smooth keyframe. So let's press play. So that's smooth. Just as a quick look, let's change it to linear for a quick comparison. And let's press play. This is linear. So maybe not as smooth. So smooth is, it has its use case if you want a little bit of a smoother transition for your effect. And that's pretty much it for the in-depth look at keyframing. And hopefully I've made it clear. If you still had any questions, please let me know in the comments. We're going to go ahead now and talk about panning and zooming. So let's delete our keyframes here. We're going to start from scratch. I've extended out the photo duration here to a little bit over seven seconds. Doesn't have to be exact. I'll zoom out a little bit in my timeline and let's just jump back to the very beginning. So I want to do something where it starts off at the full size image. So we're talking about the panning and zooming effect now. And how we're achieving to do that is using the keyframe functionality of our transform effect. So the first thing that I want to do is have a zoomed out picture. Then I want to zoom in to Luigi, then zoom in to Yoshi, and lastly, zoom into Mario, and then zoom out to see the whole picture. I'll advance my time a little bit. And I think at the one second mark, I want to zoom in at Luigi. We're talking about the options of the transform effect now. So notice that there are a few handles here. So we've got handles in the corners and this X handle in the middle. Let's check them out. So the X handle in the middle, if I click on it and press on it, I can drag and move the image around and notice that the X and Y values are also changing. So that means that if I type in an X value here, I can also move the image. If I type in a Y value, the same thing. And notice that these handles are up here. If I change that, if I manipulate those, it's resizing the image. I can also resize the image likewise over here, changing the width, changing the height. I can break the aspect ratio if I wanted to. In this case, I'm not gonna do that, but if you need to, you can do that. You can also change the size here. If I'm reducing the size, the uh, size percent also changes. So I can also type in a size if I wanted to. And there's option also for opacity, which is the transparency of your photo or your video in this case. So this is great for doing overlays if you want. We've also got an option for rotation. So you can rotate your image. There's some options over here for blending. Uh, we're not going to get into that today. Uh, some options for distorting. And we've got a rotate from center, which is an option that you can uncheck or check if you want. You can rotate from the corner. I think rotating from the center would serve most of your purposes anyway. So let's reset everything back. So we've, we're back to where we started. And let's apply that effect that we're talking about. So at the one second mark, let's add a keyframe and let's zoom in. So I think I'll try 200%. That's pretty good. I can move to focus on Luigi right here. Yoshi is still in the background and I think that's fine. And let's check out what happens there. So I've moved to the front of the clip, pressing play using the space bar. I've got a simple zoom into Luigi's face. Next, I want to zoom into Yoshi. Let me go and move this over here, add another keyframe. And it looks like I can't drag this anymore because it's covering it, right? So a workaround for that is simply to click on my X position over here, and then I can use the mouse wheel. I'm just mousing, scrolling down to move to Yoshi. And once I can grab this, I can now move this for a quicker action. So I'll put Yoshi in the middle. I kind of don't want the Y axis to move, the Y position to move. So let me jump back to my previous keyframe. I'll just take note it's at minus 183. I'll jump forward and I'll manually type in minus 183 over here. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Jumping back to the beginning of the clip, press play. 
Let me zoom into Luigi and then zoom in right away to Yoshi. Now, the question is, what if I don't want to do that? What if I'm doing a voiceover and I'm talking and I want to talk about Luigi for a second? So I don't want to jump straight to Yoshi. So how I can do that is, first, let's move this keyframe to the next tab over here, which is at three seconds. And we're going to create another keyframe in between because we don't want the animation to happen. We want it to stay with Luigi, let's say, for a second. So I'll move my cursor back here and we're going to use the tools that we learned earlier today. Today is duplicating the selected keyframe. So I want to duplicate this. So I'll duplicate that and move that over here and press duplicate again to paste. So now what's happening is these keyframes are the same. So there's no change that's happening between there and there. The change happens between here and here. So let's check out what that looks like. Pressing play, stays around for Luigi for a while, and then moves on to Yoshi. So that's how you can do that panning and zooming while talking about different objects in a photo or in a video if you like. So we'll apply the same thing before we get on to with Mario. So we'll select this, we can duplicate, and because we're talking about Yoshi for a little bit, we'll paste, and then finally we can move on to Mario. So let's add a clip. Uh, sorry, let's add a keyframe here. I can grab this because this is visible. I'm going to move to Mario. I'm just going to change this back to 183 because I don't want any movement on the Y axis. Talk about Mario for a little bit. So adding a new keyframe over here. So if I add a keyframe, it's going to inherit the values of the previous keyframe. So that way we don't have to do the, you didn't see me do the duplicating function. And then finally, we're going to zoom out to 100%. So in this case, let's use the duplicate. So I'm going to select the first one here, duplicate. Otherwise, you can just reset all of the values back to the default. But in this case, I think the duplicate might be easier. So there we go, back to 100. So let's check out what that looks like in the very beginning. Press play, zoom to Luigi, Yoshi, Mario, finally zoom back out. So that's panning and zooming effect for you. Lastly, as a bonus, I just want to talk about something. Just a quick tip. We'll go ahead and delete everything here. I like to use this effect setup when I have some photos and I'm inserting it in a video with some nice music. You know, something that's for the family. Uh, I think Apple iMovie has this function where it's a very slow, a slight zooming in or slight zooming out effect that's built in automatically. You can achieve that in Caden Live as well with a little bit of work. Let's say we want to do a very slight zoom in. So I'll advance a little bit, four second mark maybe. I'll add a keyframe and I'll just make the size change very slight. So I can do at the slightest, maybe 110%. Let's jump back to the very beginning. And when I press play, we've got this slight zooming in function. I can change that a little bit if you think that there's not enough of that zooming in change at 100%. We can bump it up. So let's say 120. Again, this is according to your taste, obviously. So whatever suits you, you can make adjustments. So this is at 120. So you get that slight zooming in and you can make move it to wherever you want. So likewise, if you want to do the opposite, if you want to do a zoom out instead, we can advance to our first keyframe. We just need to reverse the values. So in this case, we'll change this to 120% and then our next keyframe is at 100%. So that will give you that zooming out effect. So let's jump to the beginning. Let's see what that looks like. So it's zoomed in right now and it's gonna zoom out slowly. And there it is. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something today. The best way to support the channel is simply to like and give me a subscribe. More videos to come. We're going to continue to build upon your Caden Live tool set and hopefully improve your video editing skill set. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.